Hello. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to PostRail's webinar, the weekly webinars. And another wonderful person and something which we which usually is... don't get into. Yeah. Uh, by uh, an amazing, amazing photographer. Which is very unique. I have I have uh, been in touch with him from a couple of years. Started from the exposure. Uh, yeah, I think two thousand seventeen or eight. Yeah, <laughs> I saw his exhibition and got like a mind blowing series of work. Today, the person with us is Mr. Sajin Sasidharan. He is a multiple awarded fine art photographer and based in Dubai, specializing in black and white and long exposure photography. He has tried his hands on macros, streets, landscapes, and photo, uh, portrait photography before eventually finding his true calling in black and white long exposure photography. His fine art photographs com comprise architecture elements and extensive natural and urban views. The obsession with photography led the self taught photographer to endeavor the complex elements of photography. So, Let's welcome Mr. Sajin to the show. Hi, Sajin. Thank you. Hi, hi, hey. Isha. Hi, Hermes. Thank hi. you very much. And uh, it's a, it was a great introduction. I had goosebumps, actually. <laughs> <laughs> and and hi, everyone. Our heart. <laughs> <laughs> and um, hi, everyone, whoever watching me. And um, those who don't know me, they get to know uh, by these words, anyways, and um, so from where we start with, yeah, just uh, a small interaction how you came to photography, how you started, mm -hmm. so that people can have okay, an okay. idea about, yeah, oh, okay, uh, okay, my, again, one more time. My name is Sajin Shishidhan, I'm based in uh, uh, Dubai since uh, last 12 years, and um. Actually, yeah, uh, as Hermes mentioned, uh, I have tried everything as like every begin beginning photographers, beginner photographers, like I used to shoot everything. And slowly, slowly during my journey, I came to know that uh, black and white is the one which gives me more happiness. And uh, so I started refining my skills and I started uh, more concentrating on more into black and white. and. Uh, Okay, and uh, fine art, uh, yeah, uh, kind of a fine art style. I just simply started doing, and the long exposure, as I mentioned, yeah. Um, when it comes to black and white photography, long exposure uh, really helps to simplify the subject because my subjects are not chaotic. I always go for uh, minimalistic um, compositions, and you, and uh, what I look for is um, kind of a. Um, uh, art gallery quality images that's what i look for not not like uh, documenting the subjects like you guys do uh, it is like i always looking for some quality images which can be sold or although i am not good at selling my prints <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but what that is what the quality i look for so uh, long exposure always helped me to simplify the subject and uh, uh, that helps me to uh, to get my uh, final output as as I visualized. Okay, so let's come back to black and white. Uh, definitely, people must be thinking that why this guy is always into black and white. So let me talk about some. Uh, let me talk something about black and white. See, uh, in the early days of photography, we never had uh, uh, any other medium than shooting in black and white. And and in 1936, the invention of photochrome gave us the color photography. But the black and white photography didn't die. Instead, it's, it's flourished. The purest, uh, it is still known as the purest form of photography. So why this uh, black and white um, always known as the purest form of photography? Because it is my personal opinion and it is a color is always a distraction for me which take off the basic building blocks of a good photograph which is like uh, uh, like forms texture 
and uh, abstracts and everything so uh, black and white always help to portray the basic building blocks of a uh, good photograph so uh, a successful black and white photographer always look for uh, subject matter what suitable for uh, black and white images so um, uh, see the first thing which uh, being a black and white photographer the first first thing we need to improve is that learn to see the world in black and white it is important to know that not all the pictures are suitable for black and white just uh, think uh, the famous uh, portrait of steve mccrib the afghani girl in that picture uh, the colors has so much importance because that um, the, the green and the eyes of uh, the beautiful eyes of the girl if if he go for black and white that picture never going to be famous so yeah. it is important to know that which which subject is important or um, suitable for black and white photography okay and i'm moving on to fine art so what is fine art photography and uh, by following some other rules help a person to create a kind of a art so um now i am going to uh, start using a uh, using the term art because now it comes to fine art it's all about art okay now i am going to do it as uh, everything is connected to art so uh, fine well, the definition of fine art photography is like the freedom of expression i am trying to express my uh, feelings towards a kind of a scene so mm -hmm. I, the definition of fine art photography is like a freedom of expression without following to create an image without following any kind of rules i am free to create uh, what i am trying to do is expressing my internal uh, vision about a vision of a scene or a subject through my images so but at the same time we have to um, we have to follow some principles which i have divided into four the first important thing is vision which is the key key for fine art photography we have to we have to practice our vision uh, uh, vision visualization skill that is very important thing and the next thing is uh, uh, having a style we should have a style because that is the, that is how we present our work so it is totally interconnected so how do we achieve vision it's the only important way to way is to uh, refer the pictures of masters that is an important thing and yeah. by practice and uh, the the most importantly learn to see the world using our internal eye it's not like our our eyes not using our brain it's using our heart and express it by using your style so style is very important thing and the third thing is tools using the tool and the composition composition when it comes to composition it is photography is all about composition as you guys already knows so composition is the is the medium we express our uh, internal vision i mean i mean uh, the approach towards a scene so uh, composition also very important stuff so we have to practice the composition and we have to follow some rules and then expert of a, a very a very successful black and white photographer good uh, very well know that how to break it so know our compositions know our rules of composition and break it and by practice we get to know that where to use our uh, um, rules of composition and where to break it and by by slowly slowly by practice um, by practice we will start um, uh, start creating our own rules of composition that is an uh, an another thing i need to uh, um, okay let me show some uh, images of mine and uh, uh, we will get to know how i approach to a scene and how i portray it in my 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 artistic way so yeah. let me share some images on my screen application window share okay so starting with this image as you can see this image is all about composition 
and can, the screen which it i have screen? yeah yeah sure sure i think that is the only are you able to see it yeah yeah i think we cannot make it full screen uh, okay okay this is fine right yeah okay okay uh, so uh, coming back to this image uh, this i this this is this shot is taken from um, al matam sharja uh, and uh, and uh, in you as you can see everything is about uh, composition here you can see the repeated lines i have used simple techniques like repeated lines patterns as well as a single subject subject so what i am trying to do here is lead the viewer i to uh, i uh, towards the single tree over here and the foreground patterns and that lines are just a step to entering to the main subject and mm -hmm. shadows and highlights uh, play a lot of roles in uh, when it comes to uh, black and white because we don't have color to support the image so uh, we need to play with shadows and uh, highlights so and the the critical part shadows and highlights automatically when where the contrast is the people will look on to the area where we have the contrast but that uh, where we create mood is like the transition area so maintaining the tonal range is very important when it comes to fine art image and uh, so because the transition of from uh, black to white the in between black to white which is called uh, shades of gray that creates mood and depth to the picture so when when we process it we have to keep it, keep that in our mind and we have to be very careful because without that depth the picture never going to stay alive in the viewers mind so that is very important when it comes to uh, 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 processing the black and white image moving on to the next Im next next image this is another composition uh, it's like uh, uh, framing the subject the technique which i use is which i used we, for this we image. have a question for the uh, last image so somebody yeah. is asking is that an image without editing this is not an image without editing as i explained earlier uh, i have a uh, i have a freedom of creation this is the my expression towards this image so yes i have edited this picture i have enhanced the highlights and shadows uh, uh, i have created a kind of a mood which i wanted to create with this with this image so the of course there is an edit okay okay moving on again it's a long exposure image shot from d3 uh, called design district in dubai so you might have people might have seen many pictures from this area so i wanted to stand out uh, stand out in my com uh, by doing some different from others so i started i i just applied a technique called framing the subject so this in this picture i have i have used lot of techniques like uh, framing the subject is another one thing which you can see and uh, i stacked this image this is a, a combination of four images i stacked a stacked focus stack this image uh, for achieving the sharpness in every area and also i used a technique a long exposure technique for simplifying the subject Be because i don't want any kind of distraction um, in in my image uh, so i used a 10 stop filter for simplifying and the subject uh, in in this image you can see the water is totally silky smooth and the sky as well so any yes. uh, any uh, there is no distraction of uh, uh, water um, in uh, what there is no distraction in the water as well as in the sky and also it helped me to maintain the tones so when you check, check as far as the tone concern i am sure that i have made, made sure that the picture is covering all my tonal range and uh, i am sure i made a visual treat or a visual flow which make the viewer to go directly to the subject which is burj khalifa over here so this is another technique i use and uh, that's it moving on to the another uh, uh, image this is an image from uh, uh, ajman beach same thing i have used a, a foreground object it's, this is a marine rope which i found in the uh, in ajman beach 
and uh, while i was walking through those area i thought i was looking for something which will which can add to my uh, my image then mm-hmm. suddenly i found this marine rope i thought i will use this as a leading line going through the sea so as you can see in this picture the that uh, that line is going and it is leading to the person standing over there mm-hmm. and uh, again for simplifying the subject i just simply used ten stop filter a long exposure technique and you can see um since i played with uh, with uh, the tones so in the foreground uh, my my sand the total sea is i mean that um, uh, sand is totally black because of mm-hmm. that uh, our um, uh, marine rope is standing out it's creating a kind of a uh, kind of a contrast over there and automatically the there, there is a visual flow going going to the mm-hmm. subject over there and you can see that uh, marine ro- rope is directing towards the subject over there so yeah, placing yeah. the subject is very important yes. so automatically we will follow that line and ended up seeing checking the uh, uh, person standing over there yeah and we have a question from akil uh, yeah, such a great work uh, do you compose it for example the sky on your image or just process with existing elements uh yeah uh, see i have an ethic et- i have my own ethics to follow uh, uh, when i process or creating an art so i don't bring anything uh, anything out from the image i may remove art- particles which is which is distracting like uh, cloning something okay. which is uh, which is a distraction but i won't bring anything new to the image okay. everything is right. existing whatever i got from my raw image okay okay so yeah. moving on another technique uh, looking see it is very important to look for something which is uh, unique than the regular scene and uh, yeah. apply your uh, artistic vision to the image which which create a kind of a different image than the others and this is a shot from a, from a restaurant um, uh, in dubai mall and when i when i when i entered to that uh, restaurant i go i happened to see this view through this uh, lines going there so i used those lines as a leading line as well and also i am framing that through that uh through that uh, that uh, gap which which is available and um, and uh, what i am what i did is is pushing the viewer to uh, to look through that uh, two pillars and uh, uh, it the person will ended up seeing that burj khalifa area that is a simple simple framing method which i have used in this picture mm-hmm. and another picture from uh, dubai mall area same leading line technique and uh, my subject is very far away so and uh, the person will lead uh, automatically follow the leading line and ended up seeing those areas very simple same this is a shot from uh, maliha and um, uh, most of the time when i go to go to desert i always use uh, tele zoom lenses but uh, in this case i used 16 uh, 16 to 34 wide angle lens because uh, i found those patterns are uh, beautiful and it is giving a kind of a depth uh, towards the scene so i decided to switch my lens and uh, uh, suddenly connected to uh, connected my my 16 35 wide angle lens and shot this scene and um, mm-hmm. you can see a man element is giving a depth depth to the image and it is that is the uh, the main subject in this picture and this all dunes are leading and ended up the uh, person mm-hmm. again shadows shadows and highlights it's, it's like a playing with tones and it is not mandatory that we have to uh, lit all whole image it we can keep the image totally dark and play with uh, play with tones in a certain areas that also create help us to create mood in the picture so here i used the same technique to uh, to portray that uh, uh, that uh, interesting um, structure this is from um, a festival city in dubai mm-hmm. so and most and it's a see i just simply enhanced that uh, uh, low stacking light um, i shot it in a uh, in a sunset and 
yeah if if you see the raw image you won't find this light as as bright as you in the in the final image but i enhanced it reading okay. the light is very important like mm. we have to uh, analyze the light the quality of the light and when it comes to an angle where how how do it re react to a surface but that is very important because when the light hit to a plane surface it reacts different than when it hits to a curved surface Okay. and also the shape of the subject also very important because the when the light travels the intensity of the light also changes so reading and analyzing the quality and the nature of the light is important and and sometimes we even if you have knowledge about that uh, um, light even if it is not available in the raw image we can create it in uh, during my our post processing so sometimes even if it is a flat image i create as per our vision and also sometimes i remove light from a certain areas because that light act as a uh, distraction so okay pre visualization or understanding the light is very important when it comes to uh, this kind of photography and uh, contrast is very important and uh, even if it's a dark uh, dark image uh, we have to make sure that our image is covering all the tonal ranges okay. see uh, you might be aware about uh, the sound system created by ansel adams yeah. uh, the sound system is very important when it comes to black and white uh, so in sound system it is like uh, ansel is um, divided the sounds as 11 parts like it starts from 0 to uh, 0 to 10 zero is total black and uh, 10 is pure white uh, so Uh, when you take any of my image you won't find zero okay might you might find zero which is pure black but you won't find uh, zone number 10 in my images i always play around be between the gray tones between the shades of gray oh. that is that is how create uh, how i create mood in my pictures and where to apply in what intensity we are applying it that is totally up to the personal taste taste of the photographer because it changes because vision is the one which is varies person to person mm -hmm. even if i'm shooting if three of three people are shooting together in a in a row in a same subject using same uh, gears in same condition still when we you see the final output it will be taught i bet it will be totally different because mm. the vision is different by person to person so so vision is the key that is the that is where we need to train ourselves first definitely when it comes to black and white and fine art image okay so how we we acquire it uh, by studying the works of masters or by practice mm -hmm. okay moving on another one it is like this is a shot from liva uh, in abu dhabi and mm. it is it's a kind of a tele shot tele zoom image shot so um finding you can see a lot of lines and textures in this image and uh, uh, when you see uh, the raw image it was a kind of a flat image but okay. i applied my vision to this image and uh, i know where the light hits and where the highlights and shadows are and uh, i brought a kind of a graphical quality into this picture so that was my total uh, vision to this vision towards this image simple mm -hmm. image played with the textures and the lights and shadows that's it uh minimalism see so this is a very minimalistic image as you can see i used uh, different parts of the building to create a visual flow or a rhythm into the image you can see a boundary of a uh, of an area and uh, another small part of an another building and i combined it and created a visual flow and it was a say kind of a try i don't know if it is worked or what but personally i really like this image and i spent very minimal time for ed time editing this image so mm -hmm. why i am showing this image is if we can able to uh, create everything from the uh, from the field then that would that would that would be very helpful when when we do the post processing we don't want to spend lot of time for editing in the image so 
you can see i just simply this is all about lines you can see a lot of lines over there and lot of kind of different tones over there my sky mm-hmm. has a has a tone and the a wall has a has a tone and this area has a different tone and i've just cry kind of a contrast i have created in this image moving on again long exposure technique framing you can see my main subject is here mm. and i just processed it uh, uh, by uh, like the the viewer will definitely look through this whole this area and just ended up looking into this image this uh, subject yeah. simple idea and um, this is not a wide angle shot i used 70 to 200 for uh, composing this image mm. that bottom it. part is water yeah that is water and uh, i simplified it uh, using because i don't want uh, water as a distraction because if okay, i if okay. there is a dist- uh, there is a water without a long exposure effect that uh, water structure would be kind of a distracting for simplifying it i just simply used a long exposure technique for it okay, and also okay. the sky if we have some clouds definitely peop- uh, the viewer will be looking into this cl- uh, this the clouds yeah so i have a, i had a uh, i have a clear clear cut idea that where the viewer has to look at that okay. is what we need to uh, keep in our mind i had a uh, pre visualization i had a i mean i had a clear cut idea that how the picture should look like so based on that only i just captured the image and processed it okay. and this is the result some and the we don't need to worry about uh, getting fail even i also fail because it's not easy to achieve the uh, achieve the result which we have visualized because uh, but the only thing we have to keep in our mind is please show your best images everybody fails when we try for it but mm-hmm. uh, uh, but we don't need to worry about it keep practicing and slowly slowly when when we uh, slowly slowly we start achieving the result which we visualized earlier another image uh, simple structure when it comes to bla- uh, architecture photography it's all about finding uh, finding the structures which uh, uh, which has a kind of music or rhythm into it like uh, uh, like a uh, like a kind of uh, curves or uh, uh, repeated lines or unique structures uh, you can rather than finding a typical structure and working on it better go for some unique structures and this mm. this is an another example of that like um, this is a very unique structure found in fujaira so I, uh, i i i don't know what is this it is it is like a kind of an abandoned uh, building over there and uh, very simple shot i this is the combination of a, a, a night and a day shot i shot the structure in the in the sunset and i waited over there uh for uh, until it get uh, get at night and uh, i captured some uh, uh, some shots in the night and I just blended it together and this is the result because i felt like this image is very simple without having some uh, some details on the sky so i mm. decided because i was visualizing the subject and the was visualizing the final output so i i had a feeling that it is going to look very empty without without something on the sky because i have nothing on the foreground to support the uh, the main subject so i thought okay i will shoot something in the sky in the in the night and just add to it that made me wait there and uh, shoot in the night as well and another one this is another uh, combo uh, composition in this composition i used the foreground as a leading line and the structure i mean that uh, that the patterns also supporting the main subject and it's acting as a leading line as well and you can see a kind of symmetry i just used that uh, symmetrical uh, patterns in front of in, uh, in the foreground to support the main subject very simple image again playing with the tones and uh, unique structure and uh, you can you can know you can see it's a totally dark image and i just simply uh, uh, used my techniques post processing techniques to uh, to create a kind of mood or depth to the image and uh, another 
one of my favorite image i should say this is simple structure yeah and using the condition that is very important thing uh, say that uh, the same subject which we see in the natural day will look totally different in a different condition so mm-hmm. go shoot a uh, shoot in different condition revisit the location uh, in different conditions and uh, try in a different way which can give you some uh, good good other images doesn't mean that we visited one place and uh, we don't uh, just think of visiting some other areas uh, so revisiting the same area or same subject is very important thing that mm-hmm. may give you uh, another portfolio uh, quality images in different more opportunity yeah we will get more opportunities uh, so so this is another example it's a drone shot uh, during a fog di- foggy day and uh, we have one more question from akil uh, yeah uh, in your shots do you achieve the gradual black and white tonality adjustments using luminosity mask or do you use any other technique uh i use both actually uh, my technique is most of the time what what i do is i create selections and separate my subject uh, my sky my foreground and uh, just process it uh, in different way uh, but uh, um, but nowadays i started using luminosity mask as well and uh, i use both the combination of uh, i would say a combination of uh, hard selection and the luminosity mask that's what i do during uh, for my post processing okay okay another long exposure image uh, of ah uh, yeah why i am showing this image is we don't need to uh, visit any any exotic location for creating a good art it's a fine mm-hmm. art it is not about subject it's about the artist it's about his expression it's mm-hmm. about his uh, uh, approach or thought uh, through the through the subject so look around your local areas and uh, if you may find uh, some some subjects which is not not un which is uninterested for others but if you have ability if you develop your skills you can create a beautiful art from that that's why it is uh, that's why i showed this image this is from uh, jumera and uh, this is just simple uh, simple uh, poles three simple poles uh, standing on on the beach but by using my technique my post processing as well as my shooting technique like long exposure i just simply created a soothing image i never traveled anywhere uh, for mm. creating an image so if you have ability to visualize if you have ability to process it or shoot it in a way you can create images even f- even from your surrounding areas so it's all about uh, about refining your um, you were uh, visualizing skills or uh, the using the or seeing the subject using your inner eyes and that's all okay yeah and, uh, do you shoot on black and white settings uh no uh, as i mentioned earlier i play, i my image is not not only about black or white it's about different shades of gray if we shoot with a uh, shoot a black and white in, in internally in the camera it shoots only black or white okay okay so i shoot in raw uh, there is no difference shooting the image i mean there is no di- camera setting is same as what you how you shoot for a color image there is no difference uh, but all the conversion um, will be happen in the during the post processing because i want to play with the tones and i play with tones even this image if whatever you are seeing in the screen there is no black very mm. less tones are here it's all about grays there is no white as well it's between black or white i could say if uh, say it might be covering covering from 4 uh, to uh, tonal number 8 that's all or maybe 9 mm-hmm. nine. nine would be a single point but it is covering covering the tonal range so if we are shooting uh, black and white in inside the camera we cannot able to uh, achieve that result so okay. i shoot in color of course in raw format hmm. uh, moving on very yeah. simple image and uh, just simply um, okay there is something else to mention when it comes to shooting the trees 
always look for uh, some trees which has a kind of character so you can see a kind of character is leaning to the uh, leaning uh, to uh, to the to the left of the image left side of the image so uh, i have tried i really attract this this tree attracted me a lot and uh, i was i was trying different different methods to shoot it finally i decided to shoot with because uh, when i if when when i was using the wide angle lens it was giving it was not giving a kind of a composition to me so i thought to use zoom lens i was using 100 to 400 mm um, um, telephoto lens and i shot from very far and the person and uh, uh, the person in the picture is uh, myself i put my uh, my camera into time lapse mode so the picture the camera started shooting continuously in every 5 minutes 5 uh, seconds and i started standing here and there Mm-hmm. it's like uh, initially I, i i thought okay it is kind it's creating a kind of a kind of an arc over here so i thought okay i will stand underneath of the tree and but for me it didn't work for me so i started standing in the right hand side over the mountain i mean over the dunes also i i started uh, trying different different locations finally i uh, when i came back to home and i started looking for the picture Uh, this location where i am standing in the picture i found that is looking good because it's like a kind of a that pic the, the tree itself showing a kind of a direction and uh, ended up looking on the on the picture uh, looking on the main subject which is the human element over there and uh, you can see the lines over here the lines which i can up, uh, achieve only using Uh, using the telephoto lens because you as you know telephoto lens when you use telephoto lens it it compresses the image whatever is far it uh, the telephoto lens will help us to bring all the subjects close to the subject that mm-hmm. is also a reason why i used uh, telephoto lens because of that all the dunes came together into a single line and that created a kind of a depth to the picture yeah and i didn't dark my sky because my main element itself is dark so if mm. if my sky is dark uh, definitely that i won't uh, find any contrast between the uh, the dark and white so mm. uh, it is very important to create place your subject uh, towards a bright bright background if the subject is dark if the subject is bright darken your sky or background where we will create a kind of a contrast that's all that's all we need to keep in our mind it's all about creating contrast because we don't have colors okay. so we have a, if we have struct texture in the subject or in the frame maintain or uh, enhance the structure or uh, texture and if we have tones just play with the tones and create a strong contrast and the transition key, i mean give give uh, importance for the transition because that tones create a kind of a depth that's all we need to do so three things we need to keep in our mind uh, mean that reach the location early and look for the subjects just simply turn around or walk around and look for the beautiful or uh, impressive composition or subject and uh, shoot sharp images uh, because if we have that is very important it is not mandatory that we have to keep whole image sharp whatever you need whatever your main subject keep that that area sharp that's all is required for me so i just make sure that my image is sharp and uh, uh, i make sure i will make sure that i i am covering most of the tones so i can i can darken or brighten in during my post processing mm-hmm. and uh, yeah. process it in a way just try try and try so that's it okay another uh, example of using the condition this shot uh, this is shot from uh, shauka in sharja and i was very lucky to have this image uh, to get this image because uh, we went there for shooting charts um, but actually this is what happened and uh, this is a, uh, yes it it was beautiful it was a beautiful show and uh, actually i was i was very lucky to have it it's so it's like a um, uh, right time at the uh, right place because i never had a uh, had a clue that i will be ended up shooting a lightning over here but mm-hmm. i i was ready composed because 
I, what my idea was keeping that uh, tree as a foreground interest and leading to the mountains far away and i was expecting some stars over the sky uh, over the over the mountains suddenly this is happened so i just simply had to press my shutter that's what i did so i was very i was ready i was ready to capture it so that's why it is very balanced so why i am mentioning is reaching to the location early is very important so we just need to prepare ourselves and be ready for the right movement or the right light so uh, also uh, just compose and wait go for a best composition just stick on that composition and uh, capture it in different light conditions because when the light changes uh, the interaction between light and the subject changes based okay. on the the timing so stick on a single composition that's what i always do if i find a different composition i will visit there again but i won't try to cover two compositions in a day mm -hmm. uh, at a time so stick on a composition and uh, just work on it and make sure that you got all the details you have all the details inside your memory card and go back and if you have anything else to shoot there uh then go back and do it again that is why that is what i do so don't try to achieve everything single day just just stick on the best composition that's what mm -hmm. uh, i wanted to uh, share it uh so that's it and uh, going to the next image another great example of achieving a graphical quality image using telephoto lens um this is an image shot with a 600 mm nikon actually i shot it with way from very far because the mount the this mute dunes are so big so big like so big but uh, but at the same time it is very dirty because of the uh, tire marks over there so i thought okay i will shot it from very far so somehow i managed to arrange a 600 mm from nikon middle east and uh, uh, i just wanted to shoot only this uh, is it again and from Liga or this is this is from Maliha. Ah, okay. okay, this tree is uh, very famous uh, because it is standing alone over there, uh -huh. and you can see a huge dunes behind yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but uh, you must be wondering how my dunes are very silky smooth because <laughs> all that is only achieved because of the six hundred mm. Okay. Okay, because I shot it from very far. Okay, okay. And play and again playing with the lights and shadows and uh, this is this is how i achieved the image. Mm. and you can see that small tri tree is uh, giving a kind of a scale to the Correct. image yes. you can see how you can just simply imagine how big the dunes are <laughs> <laughs> okay and another image long exposure and uh, just uh, simple structures very simple is structure it, is from that the smoke going uh, that is actually I photoshopped ah, okay. because I, I just had a, a kind of a feel like a, a it was it is standing like a funnel so okay. I thought okay I will create a kind of an effect which is like a smoke is going on from it okay. so okay. just an interpretation that's it. yeah yeah uh, another image oh. reflection and uh, See, this is recently. This show was happened recently, and then I managed to to capture some strikes. Mm -hmm. And this is from Hatha. Very simple oh. composition. Very simple, but we were very happy, to, very lucky to get a reflection because there were no wind on that day. So I I managed to to get the the pure reflection on the yeah. structure. And uh, those strikes are not a, not from a single shot actually. Which I mm. think I remember I shot almost 400 images and I managed to get only this many strikes and I just planted it together <laughs> into a into a single image. So another image, uh, another uh, another example of looking for interesting shapes and sh uh, shapes. This I shot from uh, uh, Sharjah um, and uh, it's again a drawn shot. And that umbrella is giving a kind of a uh, scale yeah. uh, to the image. But uh, 
see i was trying black and white umbrella into that but it is not giving a kind of a depth to get depth to it so i decided to keep that in color okay moving on another image and i used it i mean this uh, cracks as a foreground interest and just leading to the subject you can you might you people must be thinking that uh, the sim- pictures are all uh, totally very simple yeah the picture is very simple that's what i look for <laughs> i always look for very simple very minimalistic uh, subject that's what i want but i know how to create it and how to process it and i visualize it properly and just simply achieve it that's what i do and um, we don't have so much very great uh, landscapes around here i should only look local in uae mm. so uh, we have to create whatever is available around us and uh, m- make it maximum out of it that's what my theory is this is from rasal kema very small spot this uh, this area looks like huge but actually it's a very small area so we have to be very careful composing composing it without but when we see the image we feel like it's a huge area yeah uh, that's why i composed it in vertical way because that creates a kind of a depth like mm-hmm. it's moving on moving moving in very far and the person standing in, at the far is myself <laughs> and <laughs> again i just put the camera into time lapse mode and just simply rush uh, uh, to the edge of the mountains okay. and just simply and the, although the mountains are not big Was it's very small the place? mountains were not so big so i could able to reach there easily what is what did you ask nation uh no i was just asking what was the distance from the foreground to the mountain the distance from the foreground to the mountain to what Sir, extent i think can you hear i can, yeah i can hear you no uh, nisha is asking what is the distance from the uh, camera to the mountain uh it would be less than 500 600 meters okay. or maybe more than that okay. got it yeah. thank you mm-hmm. uh why why it looks very far because i was shooting wide angle at the same time uh, it's in vertical vertical yeah. orientation that's why it looks It's like very reach. far yeah 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 uh that's all moving on yeah as that guy uh, akhil asked in this image i used uh, hard selection as well as um, as well as um, luminosity mask a lot because see since if i started selecting this uh, main main subject which is our uh, uh, museum of future if i started selecting this image uh, this area using pen tool it will be taking an year for me to select all this calligraphy uh, uh, on that structure so in this kind of situation i have to use luminosity mask for blending it so this image is a great example for the use of uh, luminosity mask even i applied luminosity mask in every building but at the same time i have selection for the sky which i have made using pen tool so Uh, i am applying luminosity mask at the same time pen tool uh, for selecting my subject okay okay same here i used hard selection and luminosity mask for the selection and uh, blend using uh, uh, using uh, using using that also this is shot with a tele- telephoto lens and uh, um, i wanted to sta- i wanted my image to stand out from others because i am sure that there are millions of pictures going to come from this area because it is a re- new attraction from dubai so again i used i shot it with a telephoto lens and uh, i just managed to, because of that i i could manage to add some uh, one light post at the center of it and i think i i processed it in a way which uh, which helped me to Uh, to make my image stand out from others so think think different than uh, than others that is the main key when it comes to fine art photography or any kind of genre or any genre of photography so mm. try uh, th- think out of the box okay um, yeah. it is not easy to think out of and get succeed but 
the the more we try more we start thinking different than others that is what we need to keep in our mind when we reach to the location and also we need time in the location so try to reach the location uh, as much as early so we can try uh, we can try different different angles or different different compo composition and just simply uh, simply just review it maybe you can shoot it uh, initially shoot with your phone and just simply review it and stick on the best composition which impressed you well that's what i always do another image very simple but uh, the condition these these clouds are uh, clouds are like very low clouds which we won't, which we don't see very often in uae so when i when i saw it i suddenly stopped my car and started shooting and these clouds were moving very fast and uh, just simply used my long exposure technique to ops, um just simply grab that uh, moment of the sky simple image another way of uh, looking out of the box rather than shooting it in a straight uh, in uh, directly i just simply thought to shoot through two buildings and uh, just simply creating that as a frame and uh, making the viewer to look on that uh, main area of where we have the highlights and shadows so contrast is very important where we have highlights and shadows automatically people will start looking at the at there so we have to maintain or arrange the tones accordingly so that creates that make the viewer to look on the uh, main important area of the uh, of the image so it is totally up to the person who shooting or who doing the artwork because mm -hmm. he can decide where the viewer to, should look at okay that is yeah. totally up to the person so keeping that in our mind we will shoot it we process it and that's it we have we have the, one one question about that uh, the museum of mm -hmm. future what, uh, yeah. from shaista she is asking what time was this picture taken uh it was yeah uh, that is an interesting question actually uh, rather than see i always shoot early morning uh, in uae because uh, i wanted the light to hit directly to the subject because i give more importance to the subject than the sky so so we don't have see most of the time the sunset will happen uh, behind the structures when it comes to architecture photography so i just uh, when i when i decide to go to go to a location what i do is i just simply look for the direction of the light where the yeah. sun is setting and what angle it is going to be so i uh, already by by there itself already start imagining when the light come from the uh, the right hand corner what areas going to be lit by the sun when oh. when it sets and i uh, just simply planning the planning will start from home it's not like it is not like when we reach and decide the mm -hmm. planning and everything will say even i look for the compositions uh, i just simply google that area and just look for the composition by referring the other photographer's picture and i just mm -hmm. simply see what i can do differently than others and also look for the weather what is the condition of uh, of the of the light is there any clouds is coming and i will just simply look for the wave chart depend uh, when if i am going to the to the to the beach i look for the wave chart if it is a low, low tide and high tide if it is a high tide it's a good time for using very low shutter speeds like a half of the second because the 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 speed of the wave would be very fast so which creates a kind of artifacts if we try if we play with the shutter speed so in that kind of situations if if it's a high tide i go for it if i need to pattern some uh, shoot shoot something some pattern sort of things uh, from the beach i go in low tide a, a time because mm -hmm. if it is low tide the sea will go down so which leave some patterns on the on the beach we can just simply explore that and create some good images as well so uh, if i am shooting in uae if it is architecture most of the time i go for sunsets but it depends on the direction of the light so i study it i just simply refer it i, I do my homework before going to the to the location great right yeah okay 
again this is also from sharja um, it's a pure uh, pure result of a wish pre visualization because this is this i shot it is this this is a sharja quote i guess which is very close to where i am living and which this i shot during the lockdown so i never had any option i don't have any option to go out and shoot because it was we totally locked down so one day early morning i just simply just walked around and just simply had a shot and came back it's a very single uh, very i mean a uh, shot in the in the sunrise at the lights which you are seeing is first light but i enhanced it in photoshop but i was i was uh, an analyzing the the light from when it comes to when the light hits where where it is hitting and what kind of highlights are creating and just simply enhanced it in photoshop and uh, uh, rest everything is in uh, is in in shadows only those areas are in highlights and the i made sure that my picture is even if it's a dark image i made sure that the, my picture is maintaining all the tonal ranges at okay. least to tonal number 8 or 9 that's why that's how we create the balance or visual balance in the picture creating visual balance is the key mm -hmm. uh, uh, giving the equal equal uh, distance or uh, uh, creating a balanced contrast we can create balanced contrast by composing it also we can create balance giving a kind of a uh, tones into the image okay so if the picture is not balanced uh, in in as per is a composition we can create balance through uh, through contrast giving contrast in certain areas but we have to practice where to give the contrast and how to make the balance mm -hmm. that will be achieved only through experience do it again and again and again slowly slowly we will start understanding we don't also refer the pictures of masters and you will start learning also know your real rules and understand where to use our rules and also learn where to break it and go through uh, go for your internal instinct okay. this is how it works okay going on another shot from sharja and uh, this is a new this is a new structure and they have opened two months ago and um, okay this is this is a kind of a composition i love this composition a lot because uh, you can see a black block on the foreground and that's imitating the main structure because yeah. when i reached to the location i i saw i i just simply stood there and i came to know that it is going to create a crazy reflection on the water and also i saw the uh, black square piece over there and that also imitating in the main structure so so i was totally confused uh, which composition i go uh, i proceed with then i decided i felt like this is a strong composition than shooting the reflection reflection can be done any anybody can do it so i thought okay i will i will stick with this composition and i uh, just simply and this this image is totally about composition mm. i love the composition and i don't know how much i got succeed uh, portraying my vision towards this structure but uh, i just simply in love with this composition i don't know why and cropping also an important stuff okay. when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, fine art because not see uh, this image you can see it is it is a very big huge structure and it is, uh, it, is it is it is not tall it is mm -hmm. kind of a short short structure and also it is giving a kind of a reflection uh, over there we're imitating the foreground as well so if i go for 4 into 4 into 3 or 1 into 1 uh, into 1 uh, into 1 crop that's never gonna uh, gonna give a kind of a uh, effect or a result result towards me so i decided to go for 16 to 16 to 9 crop uh, otherwise if you go go to some my other images like this and all most of them i most of the time i go for one into one crop or uh, four into three crop but uh, uh, it never works with all the images some no. Im images is good for shooting or cropping in uh, 16 to 9 ratio uh, 
so i use a high resolution uh, camera uh, only for uh, in this kind of uh, kind of situations uh, i mean mainly is for if i want to crop the image i never going to lose any kind of data from this because it is high resolution so if, even if i crop a small area from that i'm never going to lose any data from it and if i think about uh, printing in large scale that is never going to affect the quality of the image so that is also another reason using the high resolution camera uh, on that we have a question from mila if you shoot while uh, dim light what about the iso settings I so I always keep uh, hundred or less than as lowest as possible uh, for this image or uh, most of the images. Uh, besides the images on the night, I have a setting of uh, uh, ISO sixty, which is the lowest in the Nikon D D eight fifty. That's what the camera I'm using. So I always make sure that my ISO is uh, lowest as possible, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, I use tripod and. A very steady tripod is very important when it comes to long exposure image because the small vibration will affect the quality of the sharpness of the image. Also, mm -hmm. I used I used a uh, cable release all the time. Most of the time, 99.9 percentage .9 time, I use cable release. Even if I am not shooting any long exposure, I shoot using cable release for avoiding mm -hmm. any kind of vibration. I will okay. make sure that I am not touching on the camera. Mm -hmm. Also. Another technique I use always use is uh, uh, using the mirror locking option of the camera. Mirror locking option is like uh, when we press, when we trigger the camera, that the mirror will open and wait for two seconds to reduce the vibration and then take the image. So I can in, by using so by using the mirror lock option, I can avoid any kind of uh, vibration can happen through that so that is another technique i use for sharp images and then then the another technique i use I use is like i always use af focusing which is very helpful rather than pressing halfway and capturing uh, for focus and capturing image i always use af af lock button because that helps me to lock my uh, my focus, focus to an uh, to a certain area so if i need to focus because whenever i use nd filters they, those are very dark filters so we cannot yes. we can't even see it is not allow us to see anything through through the filter so what i do is i just simply focus without filter so since i am using af af back button so the focus will be locked over there and i okay. place my filter in front of the camera and take the picture so mm -hmm. uh, so it really helps me to lock my focus wherever i want so that is another technique i use as far as the technique comes i mean the settings come to the camera and also i make sure that i will i i am achieving all my tonal ranges like all my data so i most of the time i expose to right but i will make sure that i am not clipping to right as well as to left so i will just simply what i do is just maintain a rhythm, i mean maintain a sweet spot of exposure just simply uh, make sure that i am getting all the uh, all the data so it is a it's an important question most of the people ask do you shoot uh, underexposed or do you shoot overexposed image i shoot normal exposure neutral exposure and all the darkening and brightening of the image will be will be held in uh, during the post processing okay moving on is that fine hermes yeah yeah it's fine it's fine okay moving on another long exposure shot uh, very simple processed in a way i want and uh, it's a kind of a, it's a very long exposure like uh, because the condition was very good and uh, the clouds were moving very fast i think it is a three minute exposure so uh, that exposure time made me i mean helped me to achieve the movement of the clouds uh, which is an important part of this image and this is uh, this is a grounded ship um, i mean uh, found in uh, umel coin uh, so there are a lot of people must be thinking that how come you you achieved the sharpness sharp uh, ship on the on the sea that uh, ship, <laughs> <laughs> it's a grounded ship 
so i was i always look for this kind of activities happening around uh, around me when i found that if any shipwreck around around uae next day itself i just simply even i don't care if it's a working day i go <laughs> go next day itself because because it won't be staying there for long mm-hmm. within a two day or two they move it from there okay so so i will make sure that i will shoot it in the next day itself i have two three images grounded in uh, ground of shipwrecked image in my portfolio so uh, so that's why the, the ship is sharp because it's mm-hmm. not moving it's sitting on the on uh, the on the seabed okay that's all okay so rather than shooting the structure straight away i just simply used uh, for ground uh, as a for ground interest and uh, that creates a visual flow and that creates a step to the I main ladder or step to the main subject it's a panorama of six images vertically mm-hmm. uh, shot and uh, stitched in photoshop and processed in uh, as per my final vision and uh, so you can by doing a small simple uh, edit we can give presence in the in the image uh, why i am saying is you can see the light post uh, and without that uh, lights on it presence of lights on it that uh, uh, that post never going to give a kind of a visual depth to it yeah. so yeah otherwise it's it's going to be a blank distraction kind of thing then i d- yeah. because of that i decided to give a, a sports a light sports on it and that giving a kind of a depth and it's it's creating a kind of symmetry as well in the both side right. so giving a small small adjustment adjustment can help you to add something to the image so that's also something you need to keep in your mind mm. moving on layers and uh, lights and shadows mm. this is a very simple image and uh, again simplicity minimalism mm. uh, human element uh, creating a connection between nature and uh, the human that's all what i was thinking uh, when i was shooting this image and the person itself is me again Oh, okay. it's the same technique uh, putting the camera into time lapse continue shooting mode and just simply rush to that area and just take give a different kind of poses and uh, pick uh, one best out of it and just simply process it okay again you can see how i made the contrast over there you can see this gradation of the light over here because yeah. the light was on the in the horizon my sky is totally bright because i need to create contrast over there so because my subject is dark if my sky is again dark and it is never going to create a kind of a separation that is the sweet spot we need to understand mm-hmm. besides that there is nothing just a tree and a person over here rest everything is blank you can see a lot of negative space over here i i use negative space for creating depth into the image because even if it is blank still that create a kind of a mood to the image if i shoot this um, this tree into a full size i never going to get the mood which i am getting from this composition so the minimalism uh, keep bringing the minimalism into the subject into the composition is very important also you can use negative space doesn't matter if i leave lot of negative space around here i i will make sure that people will be looking only up to here and what is making the person to look up to here that is contrast so mm-hmm. we have to understand the contrast and just simply apply the contrast where you want to portray where your subject is that's the rest everything is just simply uh, just simply helping you uh, helping the subject to just simply creating a visual flow that's it mm-hmm. moving on Uh, star trail simple tree just align the north star into the center right over the uh, the tree okay uh, it's a it's a combined image of 250 images uh, very simple played with the uh, tones again mm-hmm. you can see i have made the contrast over here because my tree 
is dark so i just simply created some con- bright highlights on the sky that created mm-hmm. a uh, separation towards mm-hmm. the uh, tree and the sky again another composition of leading line and um, um, dunes patterns everything is there in this composition mm-hmm. and uh, that's it it's it's a uh, again i stacked this image it's a um, totally a focus stacked image i stacked on the foreground i mean focus started from the foreground and the midground and the background and combined that into photoshop and just processed in a way the direction of light is very important we have to note where the direction where the light is coming from it's a sunset shot and the light is coming from the right hand corner and you can see the presence of light over here and uh, how the highlights are uh, standing out because of the shadows so understanding the shadow is very important so we need to understand where the light when the light comes to a to a scene what will go into the shadows and what will be into highlights that is that is what we need to understand and uh, make the darks into more dark make the brights and increase the brightness that creates a d- deep contrast or micro contrast and uh, that helps uh, the image to stand out and uh, okay. that helps the uh, stru- uh, textures to stand out from it that's it and i used luminosity mask for processing this image okay. because uh, hard selection never helps so only for uh, processing the foreground area only luminosity mask can help me so that is another example this is the shot from kerala of uh, my hometown and uh, i have very many uh, one or two shots from kerala because i never used to go for long vacation so mm-hmm. and this is shot from uh, really really from my hometown just simply traveled only 5 km to see this it's a beach area and a simple atmosphere just simply processed in a way i don't know how come it came out but one of my favorite image maybe maybe it, maybe it is from kerala that's why i like it a lot <laughs> <laughs> again very simple used lines contrast and uh, very simple but uh, very effective that's what i mean and uh, uh, yeah here in this image you can see the sky is totally dark because my subject is bright it's a silver structure it's a steel structure like a mm. silver Yeah. so for creating the contrast i just simply made the sky dark but when you see the raw image it's a normal image but i processed it as per my vision so visualization is the key as i mentioned and being simple there is nothing besides those lines and uh, and i am sure it's very effective image one of my favorite i would say yeah uh, so this is the final image of the presentation same same thing creating a visual flow simplicity mm-hmm. dunes patterns sky very simple that's all uh, from the composition and uh, i think i have explained everything uh, uh, i mean during the when i explained about the pictures i have explained everything i guess yes. uh, do do we have time more yeah, time we have we have okay so that's it and uh, when it comes to post processing it's like uh, what i do is uh, i create three versions of the image like a bright image and a dark image and a neutral image and just simply compile that images into one image that's what i do okay. and just simply create presence uh, in the uh, in the image so so where i need to create presence that deciding by the by the artist which is me in my case so it is totally upon the person who processing it and uh, just simply practice and you will achieve the result that's all i hope i have covered as much as i could in this limited time <laughs> yeah i think uh, uh, like we have got lot of compliments for your pictures oh really and yeah i think you have covered almost all the things like no much questions apart from the ones we asked mm-hmm. okay cool yeah 
and now i also want to uh show the online uh, the digital exhibition as well okay so i have let me just i'll i'll share the link over here in the comment box okay cool so, yeah those who want can visit directly and i will share it here as well so this is actually our uh, website a posted website we have a section called take action under that we have the exhibition section so there you can see the art of seeing in black and white we have the exhibition so i'm going it full screen are you able to see yeah i'm seeing i think it is uh, loading okay okay Mm. Uh, thank you very much, Hermes, and uh, I would like to take this opportunity opportunity to say thanks to Power Trials for uh, inviting me into this webinar, and it's a really a, a great honor for me for a person like me because I am still a beginner, just simply learning every day and trying to achieve my goals or my. and just trying to follow my passion so it is a great effort what you guys are taking and doing this it's a great inspiration and keeps it make me it's a kind of a fuel for me to move forward so thank you once again hermes um, um nisha and whoever behind this uh, great thing and thank, thank you thank you thank you sajin for coming Lord. and doing a wonderful session with us Thank you, thank you, thank we, you. Thank we you really appreciate, yeah. and and lot of people are learning from uh, people like you, and it's it will be a great help for them as well. Okay. Yeah. So those uh, who want to uh, see, I have already given the uh, link over here, and you can go to the website and look at it. So yeah. Uh, that's it we'll be publishing the uh, digital exhibition link on our social media uh, sites as well so that people can see it and enjoy the real uh, image of what sajin uh, took with his creative skills so thank you again sajin thank you thank, thank you, you very much thanks for having me thank yeah. you thank you very much see you again yeah see you bye 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 so yeah that was sajin and we had a wonderful session ha ah, black and white images and a lot of people why being apart from wildlife in fact it's the same you just apply to architecture or animals it's the same so the technique is same you just need to apply it and i hope i have learned a lot from today's session i hope you all have learned a lot so see you again tomorrow friday it's weekend here in dubai i have a uh, weekend workshop photography workshop in al kubra looking forward uh, like almost 15 people have registered for that and we yeah we also have upcoming webinars in the next week uh, week days like uh, wednesday and Saturday, the coming Wednesday and Saturday we have, so we'll be updating it on our social media as well. And thank you, everyone. Please do take care of yourself. See you soon. See you in the next webinar.